There are a number of ways that a company can go international. Let's take a look. Becoming an importer or an exporter. Establishing a branch office overseas. Entering a licensing agreement with an overseas company. Forming a strategic alliance with an overseas company. Or foreign direct investment. Let's take a look at each of these. Exporting your goods overseas to an independent agent. These independent agents do not work for you. They have their own businesses overseas and they import goods and look after the distribution. So what would happen? Let's take a look at Jeff's maple syrup. Jeff wants to become an exporter. He ships his maple syrup in large cases to the independent agent overseas in India. The independent agent then pays Jeff for the shipment, breaks the shipment down into smaller quantities that can be distributed, and looks after distributing and selling the maple syrup in the Indian market. One problem with dealing with independent agents is that they typically are not exclusive to you and your company. They're likely involved in importing and distributing a number of other products and it's just the nature of business that we will tend to focus more energy on items that will generate higher profits and that may not be your item. In fact, independent agents may even be involved in marketing and distributing competitors products. So if we take a look at the five means of going international we can analyze these on two variables. One, risk, high and low. Two, is the amount of control or the profit potential high and low? Let's take a look at importing and exporting. If you're exporting, one of the advantages is that there's very little investment. It's easy to do it. The potential loss is low. Worst case scenario, you lose a, a case of maple syrup. Smaller profits though, because everyone has to have their piece, the independent agent as well as the stores that are selling the uh, maple syrup. And you completely rely on another company to market and distribute and look after your interests overseas. If we look at this, these variables, risk, control and profit, importing and exporting tends to be fairly low risk. but there's not an awful lot of profit potential and fairly low control over what happens to your product. Another option for exporting is to export to your own branch office. Exporting to a branch office means setting up your own marketing office overseas. The product gets exported overseas so it would still be made in Canada. Your employee overseas would then accept the shipment break it down into smaller parts and look after marketing and distribution. So branch offices typically look after marketing and sales. The employees there are 100% focused on your business. You get to keep a bit more profit. Fortunately there's no established networks. You're starting from scratch. And you need to hire people and you need to open an actual office. This place is establishing a branch office a little bit higher on the risk and profit potential continuum. The third option is entering a licensing agreement. A licensing agreement would be a contract between Just Maple Syrup and the Indian firm that's interested in producing maple syrup and selling his maple syrup. In the terms of the contract, Jeff may send raw materials over to India. He's likely sharing his trade secrets, so he's sharing the secret recipe on how to make his maple syrup. The Indian firm then produces the maple syrup, looks after the distribution of the maple syrup, and then once it's sold, a percentage of sales, called royalties, get sent back to Jeff. Another option under licensing agreements is that the contract may be written to allow the overseas firm to produce the maple syrup under their own label. In this case, they're using Jeff's secret recipe, they're using raw materials sent from Canada by Jeff, and in exchange for that, 
as this maple syrup is sold, Jeff will receive a percentage of those sales. Very little investment. You're selling the overseas firm some raw materials and you're giving them access to your secret recipe. Aside from that, there's not much more that you need to do. It may be an opportunity to test the market, see what the demand is for maple syrup in India before actually going there yourself. You get to take advantage of local expertise. The Indian firm understands the market and the culture and it may be that they can do a much better job of selling maple syrup than you'd be able to do. There is a risk though of lots of trade secrets. Once the Indian firm understands how to make maple syrup because you did share your secret recipe, they may not need your services any longer. And Once the contract ends, who's to say they may not just decide to make their own maple syrup. And there's a risk of the brand's reputation. If they're using your label and if they don't make the maple syrup properly, it may tarnish the, your maple syrup brand overseas. This places licensing agreements around the middle in terms of risk and profit potential. Fourth option, going international, is strategic alliances. In a strategic alliance, the overseas firm and the domestic firm would enter a contract. Under the terms of that contract, it may be that Jeff is sharing raw materials with the Indian partner. That Indian partner would then produce and distribute maple syrup in India using their own resources. And then, because it's a partnership, any money that does get made gets shared between the two parties. Someone to share the risks with. If it doesn't work out, you don't have to accept 100% of the loss yourself. The overseas firm may have technology that you don't have, and you can take advantage of that. They may have local expertise in the market, so it may be a mutually beneficial agreement. Access to new markets. There's the potential, though, of losing the secret recipe once it's been shared with another firm. Finally, let's take a look at foreign direct investment. In foreign direct investment, a Canadian firm would send someone to India who would then look after either purchasing or building a factory that is owned by the domestic firm in Canada. That overseas factory would then produce and distribute the maple syrup and all of that would be done independent of overseas companies. you get to keep 100% of the profit because you are doing it on your own. However, you also have to accept 100% of the risk. You own it. Strategically, you can do anything you want with that company. You have to follow the laws of the overseas country. It's a very large investment to build a factory overseas. There may be certain cultural barriers in dealing with your workers and understanding the market it may be that you're the first to go into that market so you can develop a leadership position in that market. Open up new markets that don't currently exist. And just simply to have market presence, better visibility. Foreign direct investment is the highest level of risk, but along with that comes greater profit potential and complete strategic control over your product.